Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode nine of the Noved Notes podcast, where we show off VR chat creators, content creators, and many more people who create stuff inside the VR chat platform. I'm your host, Noved Player, and today we have one of the OGs of VR chat on the Undertale community, one of the legendary musicians that I've gotten to know for a while, Genki Dev. Genki, welcome Yo, on. What it do? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? It's a pleasure to be on. Yeah, Yo, what's going on, Noved? How, how's it been, man? No, oh, it's been good. It's been good. No, thank you. Thank you for coming on the podcast. You know, it, I'm, I'm glad well, you're it's here. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So, you know, for the general listening audience at home, you know, uh, kind of give a brief explanation of who you are and what you do. All right. So basically, uh, around 2017, when I was 14 year old, uh, about like, it was what, what, like December of December 2017. I discovered VR Chat. I thought it was a fun game. I had good times. Again, the knuckles, all of that. Uh, it was really great. And then uh, I played the game for a while. And then I I didn't have that much of a good PC back then. So um, I got a I got a Quest. Whenever the Quest released in 2019, I got a Quest, and that's when I kind of like started uh, making VR Chat content. Then um, I met uh, an old friend of mine. And with that person, uh, we uh, created um, Snowden Town, which then became like the first, I guess, uh, multi-platform um, Undertale world with like avatars that you could go on. And, you know, you, like that was like the, because Undertale content was always a thing, but um, we, uh, what's it called? Uh, there wasn't any on Quest and I just knew that, you know, the Quest platform would eventually take over due to the fact that it was so easy to get into and that it wasn't all that expensive. You just needed like, what, $300 and, and, uh, and, and that's pretty much it. And then you, you had access to all the VR chat content. So I was like, yeah, this is definitely one day going to be like booming and a lot, like mo the majority of VR chat players would get on that so we thought that it would be a good idea to make Snowden from Undertale into a world with avatars that people could go on and that was definitely a great thing uh that was definitely good because it brought a lot of a lot of people and like afterwards around December of 20 uh, December of 2020 we released I guess the first kind of like community world around it there was a role play group there was a whole lot of again it's a lot there's the, the backstory goes on and on there's a there's a whole lot but then we created i guess what i would call the community formula uh the idea of having role play groups and different just a community and one discord server and having so much going on and so many members doing kind of like their own thing while you know you know i was owner of all of it and i was uh taking care of a lot of stuff then what happened eventually is um around uh what is it uh december no it was uh i think around march of 2022 uh march of 2022 i decided to make uh, i might be wrong about the dates uh i'm just this is all tell i have no notes or nothing but um we decided to turn what used to be only an undertale community on vr chat into uh what was snowden first so that was kind of like a multi-fandom uh thing it was like a multi-fandom community. We included Genshin Impact, and more content. It was like a thing with, it was like a network of content creators. They could showcase their work and it was like really great. Um, and then after that, um, uh, before I left the platform, my last, I guess, little uh, stain, not stain, but my last, I guess, you know, uh, big thing on VRChat was really like appearing at the, being invited to the New Year's Eve um, 2023 world by uh, Spooky Ghost Boo and the VR chat team. So that was definitely definitely something. And uh, after that, I had to, you know, I kind of make the made the decision of leaving VR chat to pursue uh, a music career, which was definitely good for me. And uh, you know, I had good times on VR chat, but I feel like uh, a lot of things I wanted to do, I did. And uh, you know, that 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 was definitely uh, that was good. You know, that. That was definitely something. When you spend a lot of time on this game, sometimes, you know, like, you, especially I was young. Like, I made Snowden when I was, like, what, 16? And I left VRChat at 19, so that was... Now there's a new owner of Snowden, 
uh, there's a new person running running the show. Um, in the, the community is now called Snowed Inside, so definitely check it out because the new owner is is really uh, they're really ambitious and they have a lot of talent. So definitely check it out because that's now the thing that's currently. If you want more of Snowden or you used to be in Snowden back then, this is what you want to be looking into for sure. Because uh, you know they're taking the same formula that I created and they're basically expanding on it. Oh so, yeah. Hell yeah. No, that's that's what's up. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about like the origins, you know, of Snowden town. So, you, you know, you, you've been around the platform for a good minute. Uh, what inspired you to go, you know, specifically to building a Snowden town? You know, there, there are so many so, different okay. fandoms out there. You know, what inspired the undertale specifically? So I think I was already like super into Undertale at that time. I was at a time where I kind of like uh, discovered Undertale and I was like, really super into it. Like it really, like to this day, Undertale is still, I think one of the greatest pieces of, of uh, fiction um, just ever, like in media. Like I really think it's like really good and its message is really good as well. And uh, it's so Undertale, I, I still use some of it for my music as well. Like just some aspects of it. Uh, I, in my last song, I, I had like a Let Motif from Deltrune in there. Some people spotted, some people didn't. But yeah, um, no, Undertale was always like a, always played like a, a big part of my life, especially when I really got my quest, my uh, Oculus quest back then. And uh, my avatar back then was just like a floating car avatar with my name on it. Um, that's all it was. It wasn't even this one. Uh, it was just a, a typical car MMD model. And then the person was with me. Um, they originally, they uh, thought of the idea of making kind of like an underhub like place. Because there was a world, kind of like an underhub world made by a pauper. Uh, back in the day on PC and they wanted to do the same thing and then I was like, you know what? I think Snowden just like Snowden HD by Laddie Prod Would actually be a much better fit. I think it you know it, It'd be nice kind of like a cool place to hang out I was like the aesthetic of Snowden, you know the snow and everything even though I'm, I prefer summer I think just Snowden and VR was always I always preferred Snowden HD to the underhub when I was on PC So we went for that and I guess that's where the base comes from. That's really where it comes from. Yeah Interesting interesting. So yeah, so you started Snowden Town. Um, what inspired you to make it into Snowden Verse? So again, uh, it was really because I had kind of like reached a state where I feel like everything Undertale related, like I wanted to basically expand. Like that is that was like my excuse of expanding on the community I had already built and kind of like doing my own thing. I really wanted Snowden to at some point when I you know when I did everything that I thought you know when I reached a state basically where I was like okay I think that's enough Undertale like I, I've you know we've we've done the Undertale part it was still gonna continue but I wanted to expand you know I got into some you know I I, I got into Genshin Impact and Amori and a bunch of other uh, cool games and I was like you know I'll, I'll capitalize on that and um that's when I came up with the idea of Snowinverse and this idea of having kind of like an expanded uh, multi-fandom community all connected and having different worlds, just being connected to Snowinverse. Yeah, also had something to do with the storyline I had going on. I've always been like a big storyteller. So um, I thought that it would go well because uh, definitely one of the things that made Snowden special was the Snow the the storyline that we came up with and kind of like the lore surrounding it. We always had like mysteries going on and people theorizing. So whenever Snowdenverse was a thing, it became more than just Undertale, which was the base of all of it. And um, yeah, that was just really just me getting into some new games and I wanted to capitalize on the new uh, content I got into and make Snowdenverse. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. No. And let you know, you you mentioned the storyline quite a bit. What drove you to continue a storyline that wasn't necessarily, you know, it, it had Undertale themes, but there was so much more to it. Um, you know, uh, what did, what inspired that? Well, honestly, I could go on and on about it because underneath everything that was going on with Snowden, I had like. There was another project that I've been working on since the age of 14, and um, I, uh, I really, um, you know, I really hope, I hope to God that, you know, one day, you know, it comes to a uh, fruit, uh, you know, it comes, you know, it, it gets completed because it's definitely a lifelong project, uh, which I'm not going to get too heavy into because it's kind of like, you know, it, it's pretty low key, I would say. It's not really, uh, but this project in question um is again it's like a life 
a lifelong project of mine which I've been working on since the age of 14 and I'm still working on it to this very day. Every day I add a little bit more to it. I have so many documents about it. And I guess since I had that going on and it basically like the, this whole project started with VRChat in mind to begin with. So it just worked with Snowden and just at the, it just basically fit well and there was no um there, there was no way this wouldn't work and it and it did work it wasn't straightly um it wasn't directly related to it but um it used all of its i guess core concepts which is why it worked i would say i guess that's pretty much it um yeah maybe yeah i, I no i think that's it i don't yeah. know i don't know what else i could add <laughs> Yeah, no, I was gonna say, you know, with with how much you've done storyline wise, because I remember one of the big things with your storyline was anything that happens, you know, in the metaverse, you know, can affect the storyline. Um, oh, yeah, no, because that's that's basically what it was. It's like um, this, like the little like the simplest of interactions or anything that was like. It was also me just seeing what people were doing and also me already having this like big project that I was working on. So I was using a lot of elements from that and then applying them to what was known in first and its storyline. And it just worked well because, again, I, I can't really get into it because it's it's something for the future. It's definitely something for the future um, that one day, I guess, you know, for those who weren't known in first and for those who knew me on VRChat, they'll see it and they'll be like, oh, this is what this was about, and this is what this is what this thing was about. Um, yeah, it's definitely something for the future. It's like a long-term thing. But yeah, basically the idea was that everything that you do in the worlds and whatnot, it add like a it add like an impact on the storyline, and that was true because um, it wasn't really an ARG, somewhat kind of. Um, it was more of like everything, all the worlds that content creators made. And everything that was surrounding VRChat basically played a part into what was Snowdenverse. And Snowdenverse was kind of like, in the worlds that we made were kind of like anomalies in this storyline. And uh, anyway, bro, I could, I, like I said, I could get really heavy into it. But, you know, I think that's for <laughs> another day or definitely for the future. Hey, I mean, there's there's still a lot of the episode left. So there's probably a chance we'll get to talk to some of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. But no, it, it, you know, you've you've done so many different things with the storyline, um, you know, and I'll and I'll throw some uh, if I have any old pictures or clips, I'll definitely be throwing them uh, throughout the podcast, you know, because you've had you've had different storylines with like uh, kind of like eldritch horror, like demons. Um, you had an entire city in the background of Snowden Town, like mm -hmm. exploding, um, which, you know, you've had so many different, oh, yeah, live different events. events. Yeah, Not the live events. The live events are definitely what I'm the most proud of about what I did on VRChat. This is the live events are is definitely like something that I'm extremely proud of because it's something that I haven't seen anyone make. Like, I and I hope that people really get to it because I mean, yeah, you've seen live events, but they they weren't story related. They didn't have really depth into it. They're just kind of like cool live events, like raves or whatever. But these live events that we were making, they were like. You know those Fortnite live events? Like they were pretty much that, but on VRChat. And you know, I'm not gonna get. I, I'm still gonna be humble, but you know, it's like I was. It was like a one man thing. Me taking care of all of that and making sure the worlds and updates would get uploaded in time and the the events would go well. So that that was definitely crazy because, like, any time we would do a live event, the player count would get like it was really wild. I'm I'm just really glad that it worked out and that people enjoyed it. Uh, by the way, if you want to see some of those live events, um. There's a lot of footage on YouTube. If you look up Snoon's Race on YouTube, there's a playlist and a bunch of trailers and a bunch of, like, um, just, you know, live events and that you can look into and theory videos as well. So I want to kind of, like, look into it and see. Uh, even in the Discord server, there's a featured projects channel in the in Discord.g slash Snowden uh, uh, where um, there's, like, yeah, uh, featured projects where there is basically everything that I had done and including live events and it's a lot of story related stuff but you know it was heavily yes then it was definitely heavily based on you know lore and story and you know storytelling and all of that stuff for sure yeah so, yeah definitely go check out the Snowdenverse, you know playlist uh all these links will be in the description including discord server and all that but yeah so the, the live events right you know uh if you had a guess what was the longest live event 
production like? Like, how long did it take you to put together? I guess I'll use like, let's say the like, I guess it was, what was it been the season three to four with the with the crazy uh, like was, world. No, stuff? actually, the first the first live event was before season one. So the first live event was before season one. That was my first time doing it. So what happened was really simple. The whole world like kind of like just went black, which is something I kind of like did. I think. I think I did it twice. Yes. So the whole world went. Uh, part of, part of the live events too were really the YouTube videos because we can't really. Um, something I definitely wanted to do at some point is having an actual live event, like some explosions and some crazy stuff going on in VR chat. But you know, I left the platform before I could do that, and you know that was fine with me because the idea of the live events was still something that I had done, and I was cool with it. But uh, a lot of it would would be on YouTube. So while people were waiting in the world, and there would be, you know, they could explore the world and whatnot. Basically, the idea is of the way we do live events. I'll just explain it. So you know, for people who weren't there, um, mm. typically the way we would do it is that uh, I generally like excluding the little exceptions. The the main world, the main up world, people would go to would go black for like three days, right? So people would just go there and be like, yo, like what is going on, like whoa and then they would look around they would explore a little and then everything would be weird it, actually no, no 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 i just remembered so before season one what we did was that uh a week before and it also because i completely forgot about everything that led to those live events because the, the live events just didn't just happen like that there would be kind of like development like small changes in the worlds and the updates it would be little updates with small changes and there would be weird and people didn't really quite get them and then they would make theories and then at some point uh, development led to the big thing appearing like i don't know for i'll take the first example like uh s before season one when there was like this big kind of like meteorite like floating in the sky with the tentacles and people would be like yo what is going on the music would be weird everything would be weird and then boom there would be like the big day with where everything just went black and people would just explore this void with little you know easter eggs here and there and then um there would be what's it called um there would be a link to a youtube video that would premiere and then whenever bef like before the world would drop um they would watch the youtube video and basically see what's going on and then boom the update would drop that was season one uh which i think was definitely i i wouldn't say my favorite but I honestly i just liked all of them i think the my least favorite is probably just the, the one before the pre-season four one because that one i wanted to do something else and i couldn't do it but i still had a good live event going but you know i, I guess it's just kind of like subjective um no nah, yeah i think the one that took the longest Honestly, yeah, probably the first one, the preseason one or uh, one, because that was just like, oh no, never mind, preseason three. Because what we did for that, like the the little uh the like the tri the story trailer with the voice acting and everything and the the like the like the animation. Not, it wasn't really an animation. It was more like an animat animatic. That's what that's what we called them. Uh, with like little slides and everything with voice acting like that 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 was definitely something the whole world just went black that was pre-season three and um but that that was like really crazy because the whole world the whole world just went black it was a void for three days and there would still be a whole lot of people just waiting there and there was just a door and people would try to open the door and that was oh bro that that was really those were good times for sure that was like really something and um and then boom the day the big day would arrive and oh my like it would be like what what 500 players in like instances and they just all went to that door when the door opened it was like anyway but um yeah whenever that, it was really stressful i'm not gonna lie because i had to do everything in time i was really acting as if i was fucking epic games and like figuring all of it out just by myself but at the end of the day i did it and i'm pretty proud of it so you know um yeah yeah uh probably pre-season three my answer would be pre-season three for sure yeah no i'll say i i do remember i wasn't there during the season one but i do remember the season two three four like pre live events mm -hmm. and each one of which were you know phenomenal and yes there will be footage there's gonna Thank be a you. lot of i know that this one is gonna have a lot of footage because there is so much to unpack when it comes to these live events um you know yeah. it, it me us talking about it doesn't do it justice quite simply um, yeah yeah but yeah no i was gonna say with with how many you know live events you've had like in-game events like uh like just hangouts and like role plays and stuff you had uh uh the Le Flambeau role play um, oh yeah that was that was definitely i think the Le Flambeau was definitely i think when snowden that was like the first peak of snowden because i 
the, the whole gig of Lafon Bow is really simple and silly, but it really worked out with the Undertale community. Uh, where, as in, basically, I don't know if y'all play, play the Undertale, in Grill Bees, there's, like, a back door. And we always kind of, like, add that back door, like, like, just there. And I wanted to, I was really inspired by the Ruffle Gator uh, role plays. You know, when he streams and everything, like, he has, like, this little bar area that's, like, really big. And uh, I basically wanted to do the same thing. So uh, when I pitched the idea to uh, the co-owner who was with me, uh, uh, we worked on it. And uh, that was actually my first time actually genuinely like doing work in Unity too. So that was definitely something. And then um, when we got to it, we um, we released the world and there was a concept similar to the Lily's Police Department where, you know, you join, you apply, and then boom, you're, you become, you know, you're a maid, and you serve people in public instances, and just have fun, and, like, people really, really got into it, like, that, yeah, it, I would say that was probably the golden age of Snowden, because that was the first time Snowden reached a peak that was, like, like, it was just crazy, because that was basically an original fan world, it wasn't really based off of everything, apart just from the concept of Undertale, it was fully original, and then people would go there and just, they would they would surf players and it was like yeah that that was something for sure yeah no and you know that 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 was definitely it was definitely a different time and era um when it came to the yep, Flumbo. yeah you know mm -hmm. everyone was stuck at home you know because of covid and you know a lot of you know people yep. were getting vr headsets and you know hopping on vr chat. i think that definitely played a part that most definitely played a part uh the fact that everyone was kind of like at home and with vr headsets um that most definitely played a part because like the like honestly thinking back on it like the player counts like it, like it doesn't make sense to me because it wasn't <laughs> really i mean now i'm being i'm being kind of like I'm being kind of like biased about it because it's been a long time and you know I feel like my work at my work has definitely had definitely improved before uh, I left because it wasn't really all of that I guess it was just of the aesthetic that I was introducing to people that people might have really liked and the idea of being in a community so active and just people so involved I think that I mean that's the community formula right what I mentioned at the beginning um just the community formula just really like worked well and you know that was that it played in my favor to do even more content do whatever i whatever i wanted to do afterwards yeah fair enough i, I was gonna say yeah it with all the rp you know stuff you know you definitely had different types of people coming into your community you know whether it was the the role players the exhibitioners for, for the role play or you know you had just you always uh back in the day i remember uh when snowniverse two uh season two and three you would always have people didn't matter what what instance whether it was us europe uh or asia there would always be people chilling in instances and yep. that that alone you know just describes how great the community was you know at that mm, time no no yeah for sure like it was thriving and i think even for me uh being young like i was uh, it's something that i didn't quite realize i think i mean i just went with it i was really nonchalant about it but at the end of the day i really i still really enjoyed every part of it like it was really like thinking back on it, it was those were definitely good times and uh you know it was it was great like for um for those times you know yeah i was gonna say um with you know with all those in mind you know you you went from season one to two to three with live events and, you know, all these RP sides of the community, you know, and then we go into season four. Um, and if that video is still online, I'll, I'll post a video here. So we talked already about like the city exploding um, with one of the uh, other staff members uh, leaving bombs everywhere. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it essentially blew up everything. And then that's when season four arrived, you know, it, mm -hmm. uh, it became a whole new terrain in the, in the sense of, you know, it wasn't the same style of, you know, Snowden mm -hmm. town. You had, you had Snowden that was still there, you know, and then you also had Snowden city. So what, yep. what inspired the change? You know, what, what, what gave you the inspiration on that? I think... A lot of what gave me inspiration on that is really just, I always, I was kind of like getting tired of the old Snowden MMD base to begin with. And I wasn't really fond of the, of the style anymore at that time. 
um that we were using and i fully wanted snowden to be its own thing like even using undertale as a base i think season four was like my excuse to fully make snowden into like its own thing and just have it be yeah you know like this you know this thing where it's like you know it has a lot of undertale elements here and there I and mean, it has snowden as well but this was my vision in my head especially for that other project that you know i've been working on um of what snowden in my you know again in my head and what the way i imagined it with all of its scenarios and whatnot what it what, what it looked like that's what it basically looked like to me and you know just like the the every piece of like every aspect of it to me that was like my vision also it was definitely also colon 33 coming up with uh, his own ideas and his own vision but a lot of it were the idea was just really to go with what I had in mind for so long and the way I just imagined Snowden to be for so long. And that was the result. And yeah. I would say, you know, you, you mentioned Colin. Um, what what essentially, you know, got you two together to make season four? Okay, so um, I've always been like a fan of his work. He's done like really cool Amore Worlds. And I can't exactly remember how we met or how it happened. I just, I, I'm pretty sure I just went to him in his DMs and I was like, hey, I'm... I own this community, I do this and that, do you want to work, do you want to work on this update with me? And he was just down with it, I think. Again, I, I can't really remember, it's been, it's been a long time, but, um, yeah, and Colin always really had, like, an, a vision, I really, um, when it comes to creating stuff, his vision has always been really, he, he, like, he's a true artist, that's for sure, like, he's a crazy artist, he's a 3D artist, anything that touches just the, the word art, like, he gets it. Uh, when it comes to aesthetic or whatever it is, like he really gets it and that fit perfectly well with what I had in mind. So uh, I told him about the project. I told him, yo, this is what's going on. And he was down with it. And then we got, we got to it and, and yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, that's, it's amazing that, you know, two different, you know, creators can come together and make something amazing like season four world. I mean, granted, there are, there are in the metaverse and VR chat, there are so many collaborative projects, some of which I've already mentioned on the podcast and uh, earlier episodes. But, you know, it's really one of my favorite things, um, you know, besides seeing the growth of, you know, creators from the origins to the, you know, the modern day is to see them come together and create a whole new experience. It's definitely a... Uh, it's a blessing when it comes to the metaverse. It's definitely one uh, of the things. I, I, re I really like the idea of just working with people. I think the idea of just working with someone and giving them creative freedom, like, I think that it's great because then you have different perspectives, right? You just have different perspectives and it makes your any, I mean, each, each other's art just improve because you see what this person does good and then the person sees what you do good. And it's just like... I think the idea of working with people just in general for anything is what you want to do um or at least just you know be involved i mean there are a few examples of people who've, you know they've done things almost fully alone like toby fox but toby fox is just like a genius so it's like you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like <laughs> you can't really um i mean you know you still had a team of people you know like timmy to work on art and everything but I think when it comes to especially something like VRChat, when you work on the world, so there, there's more layers to it, right? The way I took VRChat was really, I took it, and especially me owning Snowden, um, it was definitely me acting like as like a, you know, a, like a CEO. Like that was the way I was kind of like, I guess, seeing myself. So the idea of working with people, like kind of like owning a game company in a way, I think that was always my vision. I think this is what people should definitely do in order to like improve their work. I mean, again, have fun. It's VR chat, right? It's a video game at the end of the day. But uh, if you're fully into it and you really, if you really want to thrive with your content, if you really want to like, and you're really involved with it, you could treat it as a game company in a way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as long as you got limits and you don't, you know, you have good communication, which was probably uh, working with some people in the past. I've had some issues probably with communicating uh, at some times, but at the end of the day, it would all get resolved. Uh, resolved. But um, yeah, communicating is definitely important. Um, I guess it's more of like not treating it directly as a game company, but more so simulating it, right? And I honestly, it was just more fun for me. Like, it was just kind of like something that was just fun for me. Um, I guess. I'm objective here, but, you know. 
No, yeah. and that, that's totally fair. Definitely crazy to think about, you know, and a lot of wise words in what you just said. It's one of those things that it, it's it's definitely, you know, if you're fully into this platform, you know, if, if you find your passion, you find what fits for you. And it's one of those things that, you know, if you're passionate about something, push at it, you know, push at it, you know, as yep. long as, but don't overwork yourself in the process. Yeah, you for know. sure. This was probably one of my uh, mistakes um, when I was a creator. I would overwork overwork myself a lot, like just with planning and working on actual worlds and everything. That was I, I've had a few burnouts, but I mean, it's like the idea of always, you know, staying in touch, you know, always doing something was just, I guess, part of me anyway. But uh, I, you know, and I don't regret it uh at the end of the day you know the burnouts they go away i mean i'm saying if you don't don't get yourself don't like yeah like you said don't overwork yourself for sure like you think of your elf it's just me i'm kind of weird and uh like the way i work with my projects is a little odd because sometimes i do overwork myself and i don't realize it and i just could a little too crazy but if you don't feel comfortable with overworking yourself don't do it and you shouldn't do it anyway because it's in the word overwork <laughs> so you know but, no yeah, like... i guess that yeah uh and i know for a fact i i know some people that are uh subscribed are watching this that are homies of mine Yes, I'm being a hypocrite because, you know, I overworked myself a lot. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I'll, I'll admit it right here and now. I do work overwork myself. But it is what it is. Um, we move. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> exactly, we move. Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video but yeah definitely overworking is definitely at least in my opinion it's definitely one of the the main balls when it comes to creations and vr chat creators you know because of overwork yep. uh it's it's definitely it's definitely a struggle um mm -hmm. but you know going back to you know snowdenverse you know you had you know psh, i i couldn't even tell you the number when it was back in peak but it, it was over a couple thousand people you know, in, in Snowdenverse, you know, whether it was with the Discord, oh, yeah. you know, the Discord or the VR chat group, you know, you, you definitely grew a massive community, you know, and yeah, it was a great following. Yeah. As you know, and you had, you know, you had, you had everything, at least in my opinion, you had a lot of things, right. You made, you know, worlds, you did live events for your worlds. You, you made YouTube content, you know, for like prerequisites. Yep. Um, not to mention, like when it comes to some of the mysteries in season, like season two, season three, uh, there would be little Easter eggs, you know, uh, spread all over the place and they'd be like unlisted YouTube links or, um, like things that are hiding in places where, you know, normal, excuse me, normal players wouldn't find it, you know, unless if they were actively mm -hmm. looking. Um, I know one of the big ones that, you know, was found a lot by the public, uh, was Gaster underneath the world. You know, if you jump, if you walked yeah. off the, uh, walked off the land and into the river and straight down, you know, uh, you would see Gaster with, um, the hidden message, mm -hmm. um, you know, and if I, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, because it, it's been a few years, uh, but if I remember yeah, correctly, yeah. it was something of like, uh, it's not nice to talk to somebody while they're listening or yeah, something, something like that. Something like that. It's like uh, it's rude to talk about someone who's always listening, which is like a reference to Undertale. And I think that was like the first Easter egg that we ever introduced to Snowden before Lafumbo. I think when we released Lafumbo, this is the moment where we fully introduced the idea that there was a lore going on and there was some that there was basically was something bigger going on. I remember there were a few documents laying around, and that was when we made the first kind of like unlisted video on YouTube um talking about metaverse traveling and you know using the multiverse as like a concept it was like really crazy but yeah uh that yeah lafoma was definitely the moment where it fully established the idea that there is lore and that there there was like a storyline you know yeah so let's talk about the storyline a little bit at least as much as we can because i know there's still some things yeah. that are yet to be shown you know so to for the viewers at home you know your storyline essentially took the Undertale franchise, but also added a multiverse theory mystery, per se. Um, you know, what, like, it, to give, like, a, 
without spoiling anything, because I know Snowden Sides is uh, wanting to pick up the pace on that uh, to some extent. Mm-hmm. Give yeah. like give like a brief explanation of like what the mystery is. So okay, so basically, uh, if I were to go over it without saying too much, because again, a lot of it is related to again, well, we'll call it the um, how can I call it? Uh, we'll call it the Star Project. The Star Project, which is the project I mentioned a bit earlier, which is the, I guess, the the life project of mine that I've been working since the age of 14, which I used for Snowden and its storyline. Um, so the Star Project, again, I'm not going to say too much about too many things because I don't want to say too much about that. But um, when it comes to the things that I can say, it started with the idea that Snowden was an anomaly in the metaverse. So the metaverse being VRChat as a whole. Um that it was a breach for people existing in worlds that I would call a fiction. And they would basically be aware that um, Snowden being, you know, existing was kind of like their gateway to reach what we would call the real world, which is VRChat. Uh, again, it's it's really deep and it's like <laughs> getting into it is really like, it would be kind of long to explain. But um, eventually, uh, with time, the main premise was really like you, um, uh, like I said earlier, you know, you, um, you kind of like go to uh, Snowden, everything you do has an impact on what happens next, because again, within the story, you know, there would, there would be development, there would be this and that. Although I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like gather my thoughts because there's a lot. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to gather my thoughts because there, there's a lot to this question. So, hold up. The question by itself. Just, I, I want to make sure. My bad. I just want to make sure. The question yeah, is, yeah. what is the sto- what is the story about? Or I would, like, what, what is the exact question? So, like, explain the story, uh, essentially without giving anything away. Like, explain what the story of s- what Snowdenverse was. Okay. All right. Okay. My idea was a bit different. Um, <laughs> so, good. um... Order of Paragraph 17, they were a group in Metaverse 17, so VRChat being Metaverse 1, and each, I guess, it kind of, like, works similarly to, uh, you know, like, the Earth system in Marvel, where, you know, Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth 616, whatever. Uh, but with the only difference that there was one Metaverse, which is VRChat, Metaverse 1, which was unreachable by, uh, other universes, and the other universes were basically worlds of fiction, with fictional characters and whatnot. Now, there was, uh, the Order of Paragraph 17, which basically was, um, which basically was a group who wanted to reach, like, their way of having control over this multiverse that I had created was, in their, in their heads, it was just kind of like, okay, well, um, this is our gateway, this is the breach that we've been looking for, if we reach Metaverse 1, we'll basically have control over everything, because Metaverse 1 is kind of like, you know, if we think of them, it was kind of like the... It was the world of beyond, right? Like, this is, it's the real world. So, meaning that if they have some sort of impact in this world, they'll have impact on everything that is below. A lot of complicated concepts. So, with time, you know, what was basically happening in the background is that they were trying to find ways to reach Metaverse 1 and find ways to basically create issues. And basically, everything that occurred with Snowden and all of these live events had something to do with them to an extent. Because they were trying to, like, originally started with, like, an accident with documents being sent to Grill Bizzle Flambeau. And then one of the one of the workers there, one of the people there, were, uh, was like, oh, we found a breach. Some of my documents disappeared, and weirdly it went to Snowden. Um, which, again, the reason why Snowden was important has something, uh, something to do with the Star Project, so I can't really get into it. But, um, yeah, um, so yeah, like, Basically, that was it. So that was like the first, I guess, uh, event of something related to them. So then, you know, came the other live events and all of this. So their objective was really just to reach the objective of this group, which I guess were the antagonists because they were really creating issues and their, their whole gimmick was just that, like, have control over everything, uh, was really just to reach um, Metaverse 1 and have control. I guess that's the story in a way. I mean... I mean, I guess that's more of what was going on in the background, because the story by itself, like I said, if I were to really get the story by itself, <laughs> was really what was going on within the community. Like, if you, if we're talking about the story, story, like as what we could see, 
it was really just you being in the community being there live and seeing it all unfold with the community the members everyone that was the actual story what was going on in the background in, in the background was really just lore and was really just things that were affected by what players would do depending on what the what the order of uh, paragraph 17 would do like it's it's yeah it's a whole like it's a cycle of like <laughs> it's a whole <laughs> lot of things yeah i was gonna say you know they yeah it would definitely be a shit it'd probably be at least a two or three hour episode if we really wanted to go that far <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, hell. yeah for sure bro yeah I, mean, I, trying to, I was trying to keep it as short as possible and as like <laughs> but bro like the thing is like really like summarizing this is almost near impossible you would like it, it's more of so it's either you were there or you were not there and if i were to really get into it yeah it would take probably even more than two hours and i would <laughs> have to even talk about the star project which is uh you know with, like yeah you can't talk more, about that yeah. Would... <laughs> yeah basically no, yeah but yeah so you know with all that in mind you know you, you've you've created a community with you know basically the story of how the community interacts with the metaverse you know with some background stuff you know with par order paragraph 17 uh the three heroes you know and uh, there's gonna be a lot of footage oh, so yeah. definitely you know check out the full videos down in the description it'll explain everything a little bit better than what we're explaining it here um like he said there's you know obviously some future stuff so make sure to you know check that out all the links will be in the description um so you know with all that in mind you know after the new year's uh the vr chat new year's world of 2023 uh you announced your departure from vr chat um you know and you were wanting to focus on your music you know so mm -hmm. I, I i do gotta ask you know what inspired you know, what inspired you to start working on music over VR chat? Ever since I was little, I think music was like always something that's just like no matter the genre or no matter what it is, like music has always been like, I've always just loved music, like to an extent. Um, it really started with when I was younger, Vocaloid stuff and video game music and all of that. That's really the thing that got me into it. And then around the age of 16, uh, that's when I got more into hip hop and more into like the actual scene and what was going on. And just like the, the idea of like, I think what really got me into music to this extent was when um, I had my first love story. Uh, which, uh, you know, my first breakup and everything, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but um, I decided to listen to an artist that I really liked, which was uh, Tyler, the creator. I decided to listen to uh, his album, Igor, just out of pure, you know, just it was kind of like random. And I think it's more of the idea that for the first time I was just, you know, going through these emotions of going through a breakup and you know all of that for the first time i was understanding a lot of what was said in these songs and that really kind of like opened my eyes on the art of music even more it wasn't just about sounds anymore the way things are you know like were sounding or just it wasn't really about the sounds or or the, the you know melodies or if it were if it was groovy or not it was about the meaning and the actual art behind it the fact that you're not visualizing anything, right? So when you watch a movie, you know, a movie has different com comp uh, components to it, right? That makes you enjoy the, the you know, mo the movie. For example, there's visuals, there's music, there's audio, um, there's, there's a whole lot. Video games too. Video games, you have the actual activity of interacting, right? You're actually playing, you're the one in control while there's music, visuals, you know. With music, it's more of the fact that all that you have in mind, all that you have in front of you is just the audio. And the fact that you're able to get so, Im that a piece of audio can get you so immersed and give you such an image to what the artist is like telling you. Always like just like that, that was really something big with me whenever I went through uh, my first breakup because that definitely opened my, my eyes even more. That was like a really, uh, like a, <clears throat> that was really necessary uh to you know uh, my development um so that was my first ever thought of starting music at that time but i was still making vr chat content at that time and then in real life in the real world so i'm from montreal and montreal is like a really big music scene going for uh for it and um so uh a lot of people i know irl were 
into music. Uh, my sister's boyfriend was a producer. One day I decided to record my first song there just to kind of like fuck around and, you know, try things. And, um, and uh, it just kind of worked. And I was really, and, you know, I ended up being pretty good at it. So afterwards, you know, again, at that time, we're talking about what, 2021. So I was still making VR chat content. And afterwards, I decided around what September September of 2022 to actually get into it because of connections uh that I had in the city and just a whole lot of different whole lot of different reasons um I decided to get into it learn producing making beats uh writing just all of that stuff I made uh my own music group with a label uh with friends of mine uh, in real life uh, uh so I which I turned all into artists because originally i remember we would be at school and it would just be freestyling and i was there like just kind of like oh cool <laughs> i wasn't really into it i remember one day it's funny because one day i remember being like oh well if i were to get into music i would actually fucking like i would be the best at it i remember saying that that was a really long time ago i remember saying that to to them and um because they were like, they would be freestyling and everything. You know, you know, at school when, you know, the the guys, they're freestyling and they're like putting a beat on. That's basically what was going on. And that was like, again, it's it's like a few events of my life that led me to actually me starting music. There were, there were just a lot of layers. It was a lot of development. And then when I actually had started music, I went back to those guys, which I was uh, friends with. And I, um, I was like, yo. I'm gonna start a music group. I'm starting music. Hop on, and they all did. And then I created uh, We Move Nine, which is uh, my music group. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much, I guess, the story behind it. And since I was pretty much done with VR Chat, um, I mean, I was, you know, I, I felt like I had done what I had to do. And, you know, uh, there are a lot of reasons, but, you know, music was definitely the main one. So, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fully focus on music. I done my shift on VR Chat. I I did what I had to do on VR Chat, and um, came the time where I left VR Chat, and then I fully focused on music. Yeah, and sh you already you already answered my next question. Um, you know, the we we move nine. You know what uh what inspired that? You know what inspired the we move motion like in we move nine? Oh, okay. So to be honest. It also, I mean, again, it started with Snowden back then. Like, or really, like, or the, the the popular catchphrase that you'll see a lot in Snowden, especially if you join Snowden sides now. Uh, you know, the community, the you know, they kind of like kept on, they kept the whole thing going. Um, which is uh, the phrase "We move and we never stop," which is a phrase I kind of like came up with at some point, like a long time ago, after we had gone through like some situations. And then ever since, it's just been kind of like iconic. And um, afterwards, uh, I kind of like focused on that phrase and I wanted to monopolize on that phrase for my music. So I came up with the idea of, you know, we move nine. It just sounded cool. The aesthetic of it was cool. And um, and um, and the nine, the reason of the nine is because uh, in, numer in numerology, uh, the nine uh, signifies uh, the beginning now, the end of a cycle and the beginning of another one, the idea that every time something ends, something new begins. And that just fit perfectly with me leaving VR Chat and starting music. Even though the name I came up with long before, you know, like, leaving VR Chat, it just worked. Again, it's a lot of patterns and a lot of things that just, in terms of coincidences, like, yeah, there are a lot of them, but... Yeah, the nine definitely represents the idea of, you know, you're finishing something, but the moment you finish something, something new begins and you know we move and we never stop so you know uh correlates to that phrase to begin with i see i i, I have always heard the you know we move we never stop so to kind of get some of the lore behind it you know it's, it's really cool and I, I i'm not gonna lie that that saying has always kind of rubbed off on me you know whenever <laughs> i'm in a tight spot so i you know i gotta thank you for that one at least um <laughs> <laughs> there's no problem bro that's what it that's what it it was made for it was just really made to like motivate us that's what we were all about just full-on motivation and always the idea of we move and we never stop was really just the idea of like no matter what happens no matter like what situation you're in or what is like basically just in your way like you just gotta keep on breaking walls and keep on moving because if you're not moving it's as if you were dead Right, the moment you stop doing what you're doing, it's the same as if you know you were dead and not existing. 
So that's the idea of like the motion aspect and the idea of moving because by moving then you're alive you're showing that you're alive fair enough yeah no i mean that's a it's a very powerful phrase that a lot of people can use you know it doesn't matter if it's like going through irl situations you know going through you know breakups loss of job like it, it, it applies to everything to anything yeah which is mm. you know which is a really cool you know saying I guess one of the, one of the last questions I have, you know, um, you know, because you you may uh, you've had if I I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. You've had uh, you've had two music videos go out since your departure of VR Chat. Um, mm -hmm. You had uh, Go Fuck Yourself and Masterpiece. Um, <laughs> th those yeah. are the actual those are the actual titles of the songs. I'm not just you know, <laughs> links in the description. Yeah. Um, you know, and obviously. Uh, you know, the first song was obviously, you know, breakup related. Um, um, well, no, it wasn't really. It was it's, so okay. So there's a lot. There's a lot more depth to it. Um, so again, since I'm a storyteller, I like building lore around basically everything that I make. Mm -hmm. Originally, I was gonna make an album, which was called Good Riddance, and this, this is a first, by the way. This is like first time I'm actually talking about it publicly. So you know, I guess that's for future endeavors, but. Um, originally I was going to make an album called Good Riddance, which, uh, I didn't because a lot of people in the music industry where I got close with, uh, you know, producers or whatever the big role they have in, in the music industry, they would tell me starting with an album is not a good idea because your fan base isn't built yet, right? You don't have an audience yet. So I was like, you know what, but I had a bunch of songs in the vault. I was like, I'm going to start with that one, which is, you know, uh, go F yourself. And okay. So the whole thing behind that song, which is something that again i i don't like talking about it because it's more so i wanted people to understand it whenever i would drop even more songs afterwards and even more projects but i'll i'll still talk about it the main point of that song was to mock the game uh the you know basically the the industry in my city that's what it was it was oh. basically me coming in to mock the industry here it was it, i wouldn't say a joke song but it was basically just me not giving a fuck i'm a debuting artist and i'm i'm investing money into this right out of fucking nowhere and i'm basically being a dickhead like that's what it was right so when i <laughs> dropped go f yourself that was that the idea behind it was for me to literally just tap in and be a fucking dickhead because and i'll get into it after because this is when we get to masterpiece and whenever i drop masterpiece my plan of like you know you don't you don't judge a book by its cover right it really applied because dropping masterpiece was basically me saying yeah i did this and you know you you weren't expecting like you were you weren't expecting that like if you compare masterpiece to my first song you that's when people started to figure out what i was trying to do this is this is like especially in the industry here like when i got really known uh this this is when they understood okay this is what this guy is doing and this is why he's doing it that way which is gonna make even more sense whenever i drop even more projects because it will all kind of like rely on what i did before right so the first song that i had made was really just to not give a fuck and be a dickhead just to mock the industry here and then i dropped masterpiece which is like my more technical song to basically show what i can do in a way it's a, it's more of a personal song as well but it's really just to kind of like show what i can do and where i can go especially since i produced the the instrumental for it the beat uh just everything like the masterpiece i had made so that was like really just me being like this is what i can do this is my vision take a look it was mm -hmm. to throw people off it was really just to throw people off and be like oh so you know, the first song you listened to, that was basically just me being a fucking idiot on purpose. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. Fair enough, yeah. I mean, I guess that, that, that was cool. the, the game plan. Hey, you know, Nova Notes exclusive. <laughs> we can get behind the scenes information. Um, but yeah, yeah. no, uh, no, it was really cool. I, I didn't even, like, I, I could definitely tell the first one was more on the joking side, just from the intro bit alone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I guess I got one last question, uh, because we are running a little bit low on time. Um, you know, with, with the music that you've put out, you know, you, you said you wanted to continue storyline and everything, you know, out of curiosity, because, you know, I know you've left the VR chat platform. Um, you know, is there, 
you know, with Snowden sides, are are you potentially gonna, you know, make an appearance here and there, or are you still, you know, uh, obviously, you know, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. You know, this is this has been a fucking yeah, it's, been a blast. it's my pleasure, bro. Um, but you know, do you do you have any plans? To maybe you know, even if it's just coming by, like, do you plan on coming back at all? All I can say, and I'm still kind of surprised that you didn't mention it, is that you know, Athena Belief isn't done yet. And it's still something that I might be looking into. Um, Athena of Belief was probably one of the biggest mysteries, long like ongoing mysteries with Snowinverse. And it might be something that I might get into one day. And Snowinverse and the new owner, you know, it's kind of like with the new owner and everything, which wasn't uh, planned originally. But now that Snowinverse is a, is a thing, it's kind of like giving me the opportunity to maybe one day get back to it. So, who knows? Because Athena of Belief is still one of those things from VRChat which I haven't completed. And sometimes, whenever you know VRChat, you know, you know, whenever like it it gets brought up to me in some type of way or whatever, it's still one of those things that I do think about. And because it was something that people were really into and really wanted to know more, especially with the storyline, a lot of the storyline would just go back and would just remind you of Athena of Belief. So, who knows, maybe one day, uh, if God wills it, uh, maybe one day, um, Athena and Felipe will be a thing, and the moment that happens, I mean, who knows, but other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, whenever, um, I mean, who knows, I mean, at this point, me making appearances here and there, I mean, I could, but when it comes to the VRChat content, I think the only possibility of me doing something else for VRChat would definitely be the Athena of Belief, which, for those who don't know, is uh, a psychological or uh, experience that I've been wanting to make on VRChat, which I haven't uh, really got uh, to. Um, some announcements here and there in the whenever the VRChat New Year's Eve world was uh, up, uh, the 2023 one. Um, but yeah, so who knows? One day, maybe. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, I think the people watching, because I know a bunch of your homies are going to watch this, but I, I definitely would like to see, in my personal opinion, at least some appearances. With this platform, you can't be a stranger, man. Even though, <laughs> I mean, we, we've talked in Discord a few times and whatnot, but just to kind of tease a little bit, you just got to make, make a small appearance every now and then. <laughs> Don't be yeah, a stranger. I mean, yeah, whenever, listen, you know what, whenever, um, you know, I'm there and I'm online and I'm in front of the computer and not outside being, you know, doing whatever uh, buffoonery I, I do when I'm not doing music with the guys, uh, yeah, I'll definitely be, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'll see you, man, whenever there's like a community event or whatever, maybe. Who knows? You'll never know. You'll have to stay tuned. <laughs> so, um, with that in mind, um, we are reaching the end of the episode. Um, so, what I always do uh, at the end of the episodes, I always give the uh, creator uh, a chance to essentially uh, promote whatever they want to promote. Uh, any projects, you know, it uh, doesn't matter what type of projects. Go ahead and, you know, let the community know, you know, where they, where can, they can find you and, you know, what to look out for. Well, uh, my Instagram is probably my most active platform, which is Genki Duff, same name, Genki the Developer. Um, definitely check out my music stuff. If you're into hip-hop, uh, definitely check that out for sure. Um, normally, normally, I should drop my first debut EP this summer, which is gonna be uh, called Genki City Likes Red Volume 1. Uh, it should be this summer or a bit after summer, we'll see. But this should be my first debut EP. Um... Other than that, shout out to Outer Boy, shout out to the guys from We Move Nine, Vloko, Silti, Chico, uh, all the guys, uh, and shout out to everyone that's been supportive, that's been supporting me for so long, even after I left your chat. A lot of people, even after I left your chat, they they're still support like you know they're still supporting me as a as an artist as a creator with my music and i and i appreciate like on some real shit i appreciate every single person from vr chat who is still supporting me to this day uh with my music because i'm I'm not making any vr chat content anymore so you know like you have really no reason to you know support me still to this day so it's like i really appreciate that and um yeah honestly yeah shout out to you as well bro because 
you know you you've been going crazy you've been really really going crazy bro i i, I see you bro <laughs> well thank you thank you very much um but yeah so ladies and gentlemen that is the end of the episode nine of nova notes uh podcast uh <laughs> with with uh mr genki the developer himself I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy, you know, the video uh, or if you listen on Spotify, please drop that follow or subscribe, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, all of Genki's links will be in the description. Uh, so please make sure to go check out his stuff. Make sure to check out his music, the Instagram type shit. Type shit. Um, also, um, make sure to check out Snowden Sides. Uh, their links will also be in the description. Uh, so make sure to go check those out. And with that... I want to thank you all for listening or watching, depending on what platform you're on. And we'll see you in the next episode. I said it again. Oh, well, it's fine. Skirt. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Skirt, 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 skirt.